Hey everyone, it's Kevin. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to tell you what the best diet is for ED recovery. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and don't forget to check out some of my free resources below. And don't forget to check out the Empowered Eating System, my signature program. You can enroll today. It is hot AF. Okay, it's going to be a hot Labor Day, probably the hottest day of the year. I was thinking about this the other day. What would an ideal diet look like after recovery? Does it look like somebody's diet who's never had an ED? Is there going to be a difference? Are there some foods that you should abstain from? from are there foods that you should include what about food freedom should you do that too i've mentioned that in a previous video so today i'm going to give you some basic principles i'm not going to give you a meal plan i don't believe in meal plans unless you have a really strict regimented schedule and you can adhere to that meal plan all the time and you have really specific goals like you're an athlete or something otherwise i don't think you need a meal plan so that's not the point of this video i'm not going to give you any macros and i'm not going to recommend one diet over the next the ideal diet after recovery would not be exciting it wouldn't have a lot of processed foods it wouldn't have a lot of junk food it wouldn't have a lot of flour sugar salt oil that might be depressing but you're going going to have to accept a slightly less exciting diet that really exciting diet, you know, the cookies and the ice cream, that's the one that got you in trouble in the first place. I'm not saying that if you eat ice cream or cookies, you're necessarily going to binge or purge. I'm not saying that you can't, you, that you're always going to lose control when you have those. But I think it's best to have a diet that is satisfying, but it's not really exciting. When I say exciting, something that lights up your brain, something that that's really rewarding. I'm talking about donuts, okay? I'm talking about pies. I'm talking about chocolate peanut butter that sort of stuff. You want to minimize the excitement in your diet. Does that mean you can't have any flavor in your diet? Absolutely not. You can make homemade nutritious meals. You can have stuff that is satisfying. You can have stuff that tastes good. But I'm talking about the really processed stuff that's really easy to overeat. Speaking of processed food, you should probably limit the processed food that you have in your diet. So instead of having sugary cereal, have oats. Instead of Hamburger Helper, just grill your own hamburger and make that. Instead of having energy bars, just have raisins and some almonds. And then if you need protein, have a protein shake later. There are a lot of ways to minimize the, pro the amount of processing in your diet. There's a there are a lot of ways to minimize the reward in your diet. The foods that you eat should have one, two, maybe three ingredients at most. An ideal diet would also have every food group. I don't believe in cutting out entire food groups unless it is necessary. Some people can't have dairy. Some people can't have gluten. I get that, okay? Nothing wrong with that. But even if you can't have dairy, you can have the dairy-free alternatives. And even if you can't have gluten, you can have the gluten-free alternatives. Try to have a comprehensive whole diet. That's one of the biggest mistakes I made is I cut out entire food groups and then that completely backfired. That's why I call myself a 95% vegan because I'm not fully vegan. I do give myself permission to have meat and dairy as necessary. Most of the stuff I eat is is vegan, but I, I still eat meat once in a while, and if it's available or if it's really good. The next thing is it's not too restrictive. This is another big problem too. It needs to have enough nutrients and enough calories. It needs to have something from every food group. You cannot survive off of baby carrots and rice cakes all day. That's just not enough. You have to drink more than coffee each day. You have to drink more than flavored water. You need to you need to feed yourself is what I'm telling you. If you want to live a fit, healthy, good life, you want to look good naked, you want to attract good mates into your life, you want to make money, you're going to have to feed yourself. There was a great quote, I think it was some author, Jane Austen, I'm not sure, maybe Virginia Woolf, and she said, you can't think clearly if you haven't dined well. Well, there's, some element, there's an element of truth to that. If you're in school, if you're studying, if you have a job and you're starving yourself all the time, you cannot operate at 100%. The only way you can fast and go anorexic if it's, is if you're on bed rest and you can't do anything else. That's a different topic. Don't go too low. So a lot of you are watching this because you have weight to lose and I understand. And yes, you can lose weight and recover at the same time. I'll make another video on that. This channel would not be possible without Esatino Artists. If you want to start producing content and start your own YouTube channel, then check out the Creative Business Academy. There is a link below. All right, back to the video. But it is really important not to go too low. Don't go 500, 600 calories a day. Unless you want to do an occasional fast, I'm, I'm not against that. If you want to do some intermittent fasting, you can do that. Although if you're just coming out of an eating disorder, I don't recommend that. All I'm saying is you need to feed yourself. Create a little bit of deficit, sustain that for six months, a year, a year and a half, and you'll get to your goal. 
An ideal diet would be repetitive, but it would also allow some improvements. I think the best diets are the ones where you eat more or less the same thing every day, but there is room for variation. Let's just say you have oats in the morning. Well, you can try amaranth, you can try quinoa, or let's say you have blueberries, you can try raspberries, or you can try another fruit. Or if you have tilapia, you can try other types of fish. Or if you have this recipe, like a chicken recipe, you can try a different chicken recipe. Be fe feel free to experiment with different recipes and different spices and different meats and different foods you've never heard of. You should be curious about nutrition. You should be curious about what you put in your body. You should be curious about how we grow the food. You should be curious about the whole cycle. Don't eat chicken, rice, and broccoli three times a day forever. You're not gonna get everything you need. It's gonna be really boring. It's gonna be really hard to sustain that. And speaking of home-cooked meals, you should definitely have more home-cooked meals and fewer meals that you eat at restaurants. I know restaurants are hurting right now. I know a lot of them have gone out of business and my heart goes out to them because they didn't deserve that. They didn't ask for that. So even I'm trying to eat out a little more just to keep these businesses afloat. On the other hand, I'm not gonna do it if I have to compromise my health. And I think restaurants need to emphasize less oil and less salt and less sugar. Not I mean, the salt is one thing, but definitely the oil and definitely the sugar. Every time I go to a restaurant, it's like meat and a starch, meat and a starch, and everything has a ton of oil in it. And I get, I get tired of that. It's like, I can't eat anything here without damaging myself. That's why when I, I prefer restaurants like Vietnamese restaurants, because I can just get some pho, if I go to a Mexican, Mexican restaurant and just get the tortillas, the rice and the beans, it, it's pretty simple, it's pretty basic, even though there's probably oil in the beans. It is what it is. But try to eat on the lighter side, because most of the time you go to a restaurant, they're putting in tons of oil, tons of salt, tons of sugar, and probably a little bit of MSG. The biggest tip here is get enough calories. That is probably the biggest thing about ED recovery. You go too low, you can only sustain that for so long, then you're gonna regain it. And now, whatever problems you had before are even worse because you've just compounded the problem. You haven't taken care of anything. Allow for some variety in your diet. Experiment with different recipes. Cook in your home more, eat out less. Unless there's a restaurant and you don't want it to go under, so you want to support it. I totally understand that. Minimize the reward too. That's another big point here. You don't want a ton of exciting food. Yes, candy and cookies taste great, but when you're trying to lose weight, when you're trying to recover, I just don't see a lot of room for those kind of foods in your diet. Maybe later, you might wanna wait 30, 60, 90 days uh, after your last episode before you incorporate those foods into your diet. You might find that you don't miss them or you only like them in large quantities. So definitely have a less rewarding diet, but you can also have a satisfying diet that has flavor. And don't forget, don't cut out any food groups. Big mistake, unless you have an allergy to something, don't do it. Hope you found this video educational and entertaining. Don't forget to subscribe and check out some of my free resources below. If you liked this video, I'm sure you'll like one of the other videos that you see on the screen. Click one of them and I'll see you there. Man, it is so hot out here.